Hi guys. So we are going to do some work in my eyeball journal today. Um, I wanted to give you guys a little tutorial. I know we kind of went over eyeballs not long ago, but I didn't really do an in-depth tutorial. This video may end up being a little bit on the long side, just some um, forewarning. Um, so I'm working in this small journal and it's a pentallic watercolor journal. How big is it? Let's see. Hang on, I gotta get a ruler. There's always something I don't have at the table when I start filming. <laughs> and that noise is my wheels of my chair rolling across the floor. Okay, so it's about five and a half by three and a half. Um, it's a good small size journal, enough for one small piece of work. Um, and I've been using my travel watercolor kit because number one, I have it, but I don't just do this upstairs in the art room. Sometimes I do it downstairs in front of the TV. So I can just grab these two things and take them downstairs, which is easy. Um, and there's um, brushes and everything in here, um, which we'll go over in a minute. So um, one of the couple things that I've been doing is um, at this point, I've done quite a few eyeballs in here, and I'm up to like there. I'm about, I don't know, halfway. Um, so I've started making a list of whose eyeballs I've done because I do have friends and family sending in eyeball pictures, and um, that is great, but at some point after the first couple of eyeballs, I started to lose track of whose I've done. So that being said, I put some sticky notes in the cover and I write down the names of the ones I've done. And then I started out and I was going to do them all this way. And I was going to sign and date them all. And I signed and date a few of them, but I think I stopped doing that. Yep, I need to sign this one. So actually I'm pretty doing pretty well on that one. Um, so I started out by doing, I was going to do them all this way, sort of semi-realistically. And um, then I thought, well, that's all well and good, but that's kind of boring. So why don't I do one version of the same eyeball this way and then one this way? That's fun. So then one this way and one this way. Um... <laughs> This is my dad's with his crazy Einstein eyebrow hairs sticking out everywhere. So I've done these ones so far and one of the other things that I do and reason that they're signed is um, I try to remember to scan the person of um, inspiration whose eyeball that is. That's my soon-to-be son-in-law, Polyus. Um, and I send them copies of the finished work of their eye. They may not like them, they may delete them, it doesn't matter, but I sent them, I scan it and send them a copy. This is my daughter, Rebecca. And then I just keep, I've kept going. It's been a few weeks since I picked up this journal, to be honest, there's been a lot of stuff going on and I've gotten, let myself get distracted and you know, all of those things. I will say I like working in this journal. The paper is really nice. I'm not having any issues at all with pilling or weakness or too much warping. It's a really nice journal. So that being said, we're gonna do another eyeball. And the only difference between this one and this one is the doodling, to be honest. I, I go a little crazier with the coloring and the doodling and you know like in this one it's a green eye but I make it more green and you know do crazy crazy things around the eye to just make it more fun. I'm going to show you how to do one of these in this video. We'll do one of these in a different video. That'll be in part two. One of the things besides the journal that you're going to need is a little uh, for lack of a better term, I just call these a little dashboard. That's not really what it is. It's like a protective sheet. It's cut out of a piece of plastic. In this case, this is a plastic um, like Dollar Tree cutting board, cutting cheap cutting mat. And I just cut it about the size of the journal. I have a million of these. I cut them all the time to fit in different kinds of journals. Um, and then I hold that down and hold it open with some of these small binder clips that just you know, then you have a nice flat work surface. If I get sloppy with the paint, I don't have to worry about 
wrecking this eyeball that I've already done because it's protected with the plastic. So that works. I have a pencil. I've got some regular paint brushes, although that's not normally what I use to paint these. I usually use what's in the kit, which we'll go over in a minute. And then I said I have friends and family sending me their eyeballs, um, including a couple from Family Pets eyeballs are gonna be included. So um, this is our grand dog, Lily. And then this is, uh, we went and found a picture of our dear sweet bandit. So I'm gonna be adding his eyeball to the journal. And honestly, I think that's why I, um, to be really real with you guys, I think that's why I haven't painted in here for a while because I realized I was gonna add Bandit's eyeball and I think that just stalled me out because um, I'm still getting over that. So yeah, so there we go. <laughs> Today we're gonna work on my friend Carla uh, McCance's eyeball. That's, that's her eyeball, I believe. Um, and then I have it on the iPad and I have the eyeball in question open. One thing I do on the iPad is I don't want it to keep going to sleep because that's annoying. It does have 100% charge, so I have plenty of time. So I'm gonna go down here to display and brightness. I'm gonna take the auto lock and turn it off so it's never. Then I can go back to the photo album and Carla's eyeball and I can set it up here where I can look at it over here for inspiration and it'll just stay on. Then in my travel kit, this is from Art Toolkit, and I've modified this to suit me. This isn't what comes in it, but I will link their website in the description below, and you can look at, they have this little pocket one, and then they have a bigger one. Um, I have a scrap piece of paper here to try um, different colors on and wipe my paintbrush off on, and this is, you can tell this is from doing the eyeballs, because it's mostly skin tones and grays and... Um, I always have a little piece of Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. Um, you can use a lot of things to lift water and or watercolor from your work, um, and, including just a plain wet paint, clean wet paintbrush. I find the Mr. Clean Magic Eraser works really, really well. So I just buy one eraser and cut slivers off of it, and the one eraser lasts me a long time. You can get them at the dollar store. I have a mini mister type of thing that I use to spray down the watercolors that are in here and activate them. I have a water soluble black pen, a permanent black pen, a black paint pen, and a white gel pen. Um, those are all for making marks, um, making corrections, um, and adding interest to your watercolor. I don't ever, hardly ever just use just watercolor on a piece. I'm a mixed media artist by trade. I love my watercolors, but I'm by no means a watercolor purist. So I love these. I also have a few colored pencils you can see over here, um, and I use them for the same thing. I have a, a straight edge ruler, a short one, like a six inch one, and I have a piece of a, a gift card Actually, it's a piece of an insurance card. Um, and those are just for scratching in the paint and making marks in the paint and also for getting a straight edge. This is the watercolor palette that's in here, my travel palette, which we'll go over in a minute. On this side, as I said, I have colored pencils. I've got one short ballpoint pen. Um, this is from like a Kino table or something somewhere I picked up. I have a habit of doing that. <laughs> a white crayon for preserving uh, the white paper, which I'm not very good at. Um, this is a black Stabilo all pencil, which is water soluble. Um, these short colored pencils, these are kids' uh, cray paws. I can't, I can't read it, but I think it's cray paws, and they're from Hobby Lobby. They're just the mini colored pencils. They come this this small. They fit right in here. Um, I have those, and then I have a couple of stubby uh, Prima watercolor pencils in here too. And then I have one short plain graphite pencil, it's from that place. Cause yeah, that's a thing. Um, these are the brushes I usually use. These are uh, water brushes. These are the Sakura ones. And then a couple, of, a couple of bottoms and a couple of different nib sizes. Usually these are what I use to do the, water, the eyeballs. I have a medium and a fine point. Those usually work for me. Um, I don't usually use the super large one, but sometimes. And then of course I have a pencil sharpener. Everybody needs a pencil sharpener in their kit. And then on this side, I have a rag, because you always need a rag, and that one 
Wow, that one is really dirty. That one, that one, I need to put a clean rag in there. Um, I have a piece of wax paper, which helps again, protect your work um, when you're working in a journal like this, if you don't have your little piece of plastic. And I have a couple pieces of that. It's just wax paper or deli paper. Um, some plastic wrap. Um, this is good for scrunching up and putting in the wet watercolor and pushing it down and letting it dry and it creates interesting texture in your watercolor. And then a little plastic sleeve with a needleable eraser and some salt um, packets. The salt is also for leaving in the wet watercolor to leave interesting marks and texture. And then you just let it dry naturally and then wipe it off. So that's what's in here. Um, because we're at the work table and we're upstairs, I'm gonna use regular brushes and I have a Faber-Castell number nine round. I have a Princeton Select number one round, which is super little. And my favorite brushes, the Princeton Neptunes, love these, and I particularly, blah, 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 particularly love the half inch flat. So I'm gonna put those in my water and get them wet. And we've got our pencil. We don't need this little spray bottle. In fact, this is almost empty, I've gotta fill it. Because again, we're upstairs and so I can use my big bottle. This is my travel watercolor palette. Um, it has a combination of uh, Koi and Daniel Smith watercolors. I've taken the tray insert out so I can get more colors in it. And this little tray has been a lot of places. I'm gonna just spray it. This is a mixture of water and um, oxgall liquid which aids in the rewetting of the watercolor. So we're gonna put that over there and just let those get nice and juicy. Make sure we're on camera, okay. So there's a lot of ways you can start your eyeball. Now, I know you're gonna say, I need to tilt this a little bit, I'm right-handed. I know you're gonna say, you know, I don't know how to draw. How the heck am I gonna do this? Well, there's a shortcut to that, of course. Print the eyeball in question to the size of the journal page or the size you want on the journal page, and then use a piece of art transfer paper or carbon paper to trace the shape onto your page. In a pinch, rub the back of the print, once you have it printed and sized the right size, rub the back with a pencil with some graphite, lay it graphite side down on the paper, and then trace your eyeball shape onto your, onto your page. Um, we really don't want lots of, you don't have to go into lots of detail on the pencil marks because we're gonna paint things in, we're gonna doodle them in or add them in with white pen, but you want the basic shape and the basic, uh, basic landmarks of the eye. So we're gonna go with my friend Carla's eye and her eye is very rounded on the top and the bottom. Um, with a de You can definitely see where um, the hood is on her eye. Okay, sorry guys, my notifications only start going off when I start filming. So you can see how my friend Carla's eye is um, very rounded on the top with also slightly rounded on the bottom. It's amazing when you look at the eyes, how different of a shape they are. So this is my friend Peg's, uh, Peg Robinson's eye and it's very almond shaped. Carla's is more round. Um, this is Cindy's eye, hers is, flatter at the bottom and it's almond shaped but it's it's almost like a teardrop a teardrop almond shaped um and oh there's my eye all i see are the bags under my eye <laughs> i haven't done my eye yet so so you get the idea each one's different and i don't ask them in reality what color their eyes are i go by what i see not what i think i see um, so like, okay, so for instance, my eye, my eyes naturally are a very dark amber brown color, um, really, really dark. I don't usually, first of all, stare into my eyes and see what color they are, but I also don't see what looks like in the picture are, is this like rim of gray, dark, dark gray, almost black. I don't see that when I look in the mirror, but I see it in the picture. So when I paint my own eye, I'm going to paint that. Um, this is my husband's eye. He's got very, very blue eyes, but here they look almost like a green. I'm not even sure you can 
you see that on camera, let's see. Can you see that? I don't know. There's a lot of glare. Um, but you get the idea. Here's my dad eyes. Now my dad has very brown eyes, but here there's some green in, going on in there. So each one is different depending on the photo that was taken. And I go by what I see in the picture. We're going to do Carlos. I forgot, forgot for a second whose eyeball we were doing. All right. So with the picture in front of me, I'm going to just sketch the eye. First, I'm going to sketch the upper eyelid and then the lower lid. I'm using really light pencil strokes. Short sketchy strokes. And the lower lid. A little space where the tear duct is. Then we're going to put in the iris, the color, which is the colored part of the eye for those that don't know. Oop, that's a little big. And then a little fleshy part of the tear duct over here. And there's usually a little fleshy part over here. She's got this hooded eye. You can definitely see the ridge. So I'll draw that in. And I'm going to sort of map out her eyebrow. Again, you notice I'm barely like making marks on the paper. I'm not planning on erasing these. I'm planning on leaving them and having them add to the piece. But at the same time, that doesn't mean that I want them um, to take over. And I, you know, I want them to work with the watercolor, not overpower the watercolor. So I'm going to draw in where the pupil is. There is some highlights. And I kind of draw those. I think that looks pretty good. Now we get to start with the painting. <laughs> so the first thing we need to do is mix up some flesh tone. And I mix up a new one for each eyeball because everybody's flesh tone's a little bit different. Carla's is a little bit of a, in the picture, a purpley, purpley flesh tone. So, let's see. I'm gonna add a little bit of the purple and we're gonna add, I usually start with um, like a nickel, nickel azo yellow. Then I'll add some Crimson Lake red. And I'll shoot for something that's a peachy color. And with watercolor, it's going to be lighter or darker depending on how much water is there. And then in this case, I'm gonna wanna put in some like purpley blue colors. Sometimes I'll add in something really bright, like a little teeny tiny touch of opera pink. I think this is pretty good. So I'm gonna go and put some of this on in the darker spots of her eye. Then I'm gonna rinse off my brush and I'm gonna add just water. I'm gonna have my Mr. Clean eraser close by. I'm going to try to not get the sclera, the white part of the eye, um, with any paint on it because it is usually not as white as you think it probably is, but at the same time I want to be more controlled about where I get the paint. I'm going to take I'm going to make some of this uh, brighter and add it where I'm seeing sort of these purpley pink tones around her eye. Rinse my brush off 
And it's all really about layers of paint. So adding layers, taking them away. I usually work just like this, a brush in one hand, the eraser in the other hand. I also am not um, super worried about like perfect blending. Uh, I'm not about that. I'm a, I, I like suggesting shapes rather than trying to stress myself out about drawing them exactly. Now these colors are blending into each other because everything's very wet, which is fine. All right. Now we're gonna take a little bit of what's left of this color. Let's bring it down into the tear ducts. Okay. We're gonna let that dry for a minute. Let's work on the iris. Um, what I see in the pictures are some brown and gray tones, maybe a teeny tiny touch of green. So I'm going to take some um, Burnt Umber. I'm mixing it with some, uh, there we go, some grays and blues that are already on, uh, and greens that are already on the mixing part of the palette. I probably should switch to the round brush because I do think it's time. Oops. The outside of the iris is always darker, generally, than the, I won't say always, but is generally darker than the center part towards the pupil. I'm gonna add, um, let's take some more of that brown, and let's add some vermilion, a little teeny bit of vermilion to it. Oh, that was a lot of vermilion. That's a little bit red. Well, we'll just add some more brown. And I just work my way around the palette, mixing colors, adding them to my painting. You know, with watercolor, I've said it before, you work lighter, start lighter and work your way darker. Usually, at least I do. Um, I can control what happens better if I do it that way. I'm gonna take a little bit of um, some of these colors and we're gonna Also going to take some of this darker color and put it here. And then blend the bottom of it. You gotta work kind of quickly because sometimes the pigments really stain and stick 
and then they don't want to blend out with the water so uh, depending on the paint and the pigment Okay, we'll put our first layer of black in the pupil. I'm not going to go all the way to the edge because the iris paint is still wet. I do sometimes do this and refer back to other works and what have I done to suggest different shapes, colors I've used, marks I've made like that. Once you get a few of these done, you can do that. Um, I do wanna make a darker brown, so I'm gonna take a little bit of the black and mix it with the brown that we have on here. Take this. And it's pulling out the pigment and helping me create the eyelashes. kind of a lot of that. Okay, that's better. <laughs> Let's try that again. That was a lot of paint. Okay, there's also some interesting shadowing on her um, face. So we're gonna mix up a shadow color here. I need to add some more blue to it. Let's use cobalt. Oh, that's a lot of blue, holy cow. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see that in the corner of your screen. Wow, that was a lot of blue. <laughs> So let's go back to the brown. <laughs> let's, I was shooting for something that was more browny, bluey, greeny <laughs> than what I got. And there's like a dark spot like right here. So I'm gonna put a little bit of pigment there. And then I'm gonna just use just water. And again, my eraser. I don't wanna go too far with the eraser drawing the shape that I see in the photo, drawing, painting. What am I doing? Painting, painting, painting. Now you'll notice when you start doing these that the white part of the eye is not completely white. I said that before. There's always a shadow on the white part of the eye from the eyelid at the very least. So you want to put that in. It'll help your painting look more realistic. Sometimes there's a shadow below. I like to go in and take some of the opera pink 
and a little bit of whatever flesh tone I have or neutral tone I have that I'm using on the particular painting to make some kind of bright-ish pink color to add that to the tear ducts. Even if that's not necessarily a color that you see a lot of in the painting, it helps aid in the realism of the painting. We're gonna go in and add some more um, dark color to the iris because it's time now. a little bit of pigment and then again with the water. And then the black. It's bleeding a little bit because I didn't wait long enough for it to be dry. It's all right. We'll work with it. It'll work out. Something I don't think you can see on camera is when I'm pulling the water out of the uh, the brush, sorry, the brush out of the water as I'm dabbing it off on my rag. That's why that other rag looks so dirty. That's something I do a lot of when I'm painting. So I said before there were some blue, I don't know, there's this bluish brownish gray tone that I see in the photo. So we're going to add that. The other thing I don't always do is make the um, irises as dark as they appear in the photos I've received. Um, you know, we're all taking these with our cell phones, so a lot of times the flash does weird things to the color of the eye, which I don't necessarily mind for these paintings, but it also makes them darker than they really are sometimes, so. Okay. A little more brown. I probably made it too green. Okay, actually, you know what? I'm really liking that. I'm gonna stop there. I'm going to, I do wanna add a little bit of this, one of these dark colors to her eyebrow. Her eyebrows aren't super dark, but they're not as light as I have them in the painting either. So just, I'm barely touching the paintbrush to the paper. Okay, and then I'm gonna take a little bit of it Okay, we're gonna dry that and we'll be right back. Okay, so now we're gonna go in and we're gonna add some more marks and really bring our eye to life. The first mark that we're gonna do are the highlights or the white spots from the flash. I'm gonna just use a white gel pen. You of course could use a white paint pen um, and 
you know, you're taking inspiration from the photo that the person that you asked to send you a photo sent you. You can, you're taking inspiration from that. That doesn't mean you have to copy it exactly. You can, of course, but you don't have to. This pen is just about dead, so it's not wanting to write very well because <laughs> it's been very well loved on my eyeballs. I need a new, new one. Let's try one of these. I go through lots of Uniball Signo pens. <laughs> Just FYI. That's much better. Okay, so not only to put the highlights in the eye, sometimes there's a highlight on the sclera, the white part of the eye, and you may not necessarily be able to see this on camera, um, but it does make a subtle difference to your painting. Um, sometimes there is a light spot on the skin or a reflection on the skin. So then I will go in with the white gel pen. Is this one dead too? No, it's working. And I will add, and again, you may not be able to see that on camera. There's usually a reflection on the lower lid, sometimes in and around the tear duct. And sometimes I just want to go in and do a little bit of color correcting where if things bled. So what I'll do is put a little gel pen, pen and while it's still wet, I'll go in with some water. And it won't completely disguise the boo-boo, but it makes it so it just works better with the painting. And there we have it. An eyeball in the eyeball journal. So I hope that you all give this a try and you uh, play and experiment. Uh, I am planning on filling up this whole journal with eyeballs and then I think I have another one of these. I think I'm gonna fill it up with lips. Um, so uh, I'm having a lot of fun with it. If you would like um, to start one and you want an eyeball, I will put a link to my eyeball in the description below and y'all can paint my eyeball if you so choose. Um, I think that would be a lot of fun. So there you go. Um, have some fun with it um, and play and experiment. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell icon if you want notifications when a new video comes out. Don't also forget to check out my link tree. In there, you're gonna find links to all of my social media sites if you wanna follow me, places where you can support the free content here on YouTube and over on Facebook, like Patreon and my Amazon affiliate store, where to buy my book, my Etsy shop where you can buy my stamps and stencils and all of that kind of stuff. Um, so check it out. The most important thing, of course, is to go out and have a great day and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it, and I'll see you later. Bye, guys.